Hi everyone, welcome to the very last video in this um, little series of twinkly treasures from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. I love Johanna's words. Um, so we've got these last three items to do, so let's just crack on. Um, I've had to shut the blind, um, so this one might look brown ochre. Might look a little bit different to the other videos because um, the light will be a bit different. Hopefully not significantly so. Now this cord here, I was sort of tempted to do it in green gold, but I'm actually going to do the ring gold. So I think it would make sense to do something a little bit different. Um, hmm. Let's do, I've got an idea, Oops. let's use the purple violet. Okay, I know this looks more like a sort of rope thing, but I'm going to colour it in the same way as I would if it was just a satin ribbon because it's quite small so just leave that shine because I think I think Pika the magpie would want nice shiny things is Pika a boy or a girl? I don't know his boy so he likes shiny things so let's do the metal next. I'm going to keep it simpler this time because I know um, sometimes I add here. It was quite complicated. We've only got a small area. We'll keep it really simple. Just use four colours. I will start with whoops, with whoops. Mm, good start. <laughs> with the burnt umber. Okay, and do the dark bits. So just here. I'm just extending that beyond there. Because I think whenever you're doing a transition of colour, if you change colour in between where there's an object overlapping, it just looks a bit odd in my experience. So I'm going to use that as my middle and just uh, put a bit here and a bit there, like that. Nothing too complicated. Um, now I want a lighter brown. I'm going to go for, I'm going to skip right down to my raw umber, I think gonna really just as I say keep it really simple this time so just extend that a little and there a little color over that and up there and the same here and then I want two yellowish colors I'm gonna use the light yellow ochre whoops at first okay There we go. And one last colour. This one. This is our Naples yellow. Okay. And as always, I'm going to use that yellow on top of everything just to try and bring it together. This is quite a different looking colour, which is what I wanted to achieve for you. So you can, you know, you can make them look different or you can um, make them choose one that you like and just stick with that you know but I think it's nice to have some options to play with right our ring I'm gonna do in purple I'm gonna grab this mauve which is a really dark and violet in my head that's a dark violet but yeah and uh, start here really dark down here near the near the uh, where it's being held in. I think here we'll make it darker here so that you can see that there's two facets there. But we'll sort of um, make it symmetrical, I think. So make that one a bit darker. So to make it darker, I'm just putting a few more layers on. Um, how do we do this? Um, I think I'll go dark here to light there to make it look like the light's sort of catching across there and I'll white that out a little bit um, for this one yeah I'll do it dark here lighter to there that's it and then dark in there lighter whoops on the edge In there. Now you could use a selection of different colours, but I 
just find it easier to use one when it, it's so small. So I'm going to grab the 05 um, Sakura. Just, I feel that this is where my light is the lightest. So that's where I want to just put a bit of white and on the ends of those. There we go. So there's our ring. Now we have a spoon. The spoons are tricky, aren't they? And this one looks so flat in the way that it's drawn this bit. It just looks like a flat paddle. So trying to get it to look rounded and a metallic colour is quite daunting. But I'm going to have a go. What I'm going to do first is colour some coloured bits. So I'm going to choose a colour. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to make a few bits coloured on our spoon just to make my life a lot easier. Here's my colour. This is the um, Burnt Carmine. I'm just going to sharpen it. And I'm going to do a few bits as if they're sort of jeweled or beaded. So the very end here first. Oops. Let's do that and here this bit. And then in here. There we go. And this bit. So I'm trying to layer it up more on the edge, a bit less in the middle. The end of my pencil is chipping off. I also think I'm going to make this bit coloured. Oops. Um, and these swirls. I know red is an odd colour to choose, but it's all going to match. So I'm going to make it look like these are painted on. I can hear a strange noise. There's that house over the back to us having a lot of work done, so could very well be noise coming from there. Right, now we've done a very dark spoon here and we've done a gold spoon. I'm wondering what to do with this one. Hmm. I know. I'm going to do something really different. I'm going to make the handle wooden because I look at that bit there and think that looks a bit like wood. So just so that it's a little bit different for us. So I'm going to start with the walnut brown and do this in brown and hopefully it will look like wood. <laughs> so I want a dark bit on the edge. and this bit wooden here and this bit here maybe those other bits not um yeah i use this color just sharpen it this is the um bistra go over what i've done and then bring that in now it's not going to be any white shine because it's wood so it doesn't shine but by making it a little bit lighter in the middle it hopefully gives our spoon some roundedness as that's a word <laughs> oops i hope you know what i mean right so those are all the sort of wooden bits now to make it look more like wood i'm going to go back to our walnut brown Make it really sharp, this one fortunately still is, and draw some tiny lines to look a bit like a sort of wood grain-ish. Hopefully it'll make it look more wood-like. Hopefully. To me it does, but I know what it's supposed to be. Right, let's put in our metal. I procrastinated enough. Um, hmm brassy maybe yeah 
Let's start with a little bit of sepia, just a little bit, in the darkest areas. We don't need to worry about there. A little bit there and there, maybe I would, yeah. We'll have the shine going down the middle, so we'll just make the edges dark. Uh, and then spoon tricky because I feel like oops it would be darker in the middle but maybe this is the back of the spoon and therefore we can get away with it let's try let's see what happens I know what I can hear this is the burnt sienna I can hear my um, solar panel inverter it's really sunny and it's uh, converting the sun's energy to electricity because the thing with solar panels is that the um, the electricity comes in at the wrong type of current she says pretending she knows something about what she's talking about so it has to be changed that's what the inverter is doing and then it's pumping it out to the um, grid because I'm not using much. I've got my lamp on in here though but that's not exactly. I'm just trying to do a faded bit coming inwards. There we go. Um, Let's try this. What's this? Yeah we use the burnt ochre next. I need to leave a gap because I've got to put some yellow in to get our final shiny bit so I need to make sure I don't extend too far on those other bits but here we've got lots of space so we take this in remembering we need to leave room for shine as well What should I use? Uh, yes, this one I'm thinking is a bit of an experiment, as some of these have been. A dark cadmium yellow, so it's a little bit orangey. So here we're taking this up and down, leaving a little bit of white and going over the top of it all so that you can see that it's not wood, hopefully. But if it does look like wood, I'm not too worried. This bit won't. So over this, and then bringing it in, leaving a line down there. I'm not sure how much space I want to leave in the middle so I'm going to leave too much and then fiddle with it in a minute <laughs> fiddly faddly so just gently bring it in more and more lighter and lighter until there's just a little bit left there we go well, it certainly looks metallic so uh, that's good it's sort of come to life with the last colour which is fun. Um, we have got our um, string to do um, ribbon, I should say. What did we use for that? Oops, that colour. Carmine. Um, let's use the um, pink carmine for the ribbon. I know we used the rose carmine for this one, but I think it will match this carmine. And what I'm going to do is leave a little white cap like I have been on all of them there we go there right now we have got our final key I'm not really sure what this ornate label is. 
Um, just thinking. Um, I think we'll make this key silvery. I know we've got quite a bunch of silver things here, but we've got two gold, so I think it's just gonna balance. Um, we use some blue, I think, in our silver this time. Like, I think we did that in one on the other side anyway. We've got a little bit of um, leafage, <laughs> leafage, foliage here. So I'm gonna color that in first with the permanent green olive and because it's reasonably dark but not too overpowering that's why i picked it and then we will um do a few other green bits Whoops. here Oops, gone out of the lines. Mm, what about that? Should we do a green do a green gemstone here? This is not really a colour that I would naturally pick for gemstone. Let's see if it works. I'm sure it'd be okay. Less layers as you come towards the middle. Might just look a bit bead like because it's not very see through. I think that's fine. Right, um, the ribbon we could do in a green as well. Um, let's grab this one. I need sharpening. It's the earth green yellowish, I think. <laughs> no, it's the may green. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're really similar. So, if you if you started with the wrong one, it really won't, you will hardly notice. So again, just leaving little gap for shine in our satiny ribbon. Though this isn't, again, this is colour is a little bit um, milky for what I would normally do for a satin ribbon, but it's a little bit different. It gives you something different to look at and think about. And it's pretty, there we go. The tag, hmm, let's use these two colours. Let's use the permanent green olive around the edge. And then use the may green inside. I think it's quite nice having similar colours sometimes. It's, uh, it means you know it's going to match, which is always good. But also, this is the May Green. Sorry, I should show the camera. Um, also, um, yeah, it's a bit quicker and easier, but you know it's going to match. And it keeps everything looking quite consistent. I missed a bit there with the permanent or of some... So I'm colouring over it with the May Green, which makes no sense. Right, my days is running. Let's just deal with that and then get on with our key. Right, I think we're going to need maybe a couple of greys. I don't want it to be too dark. Um, let's start with the cold grey. Is that the four? Yeah, cold grey four. Can't read my Roman numerals. <laughs> cold grey four. So this is going to be our darkest grey. So I'm going to put a bit here. As I've done on all of these, my shine is going to be um, oh, down the middle. So that's wrong. The shines are going to be on the edge of that one. Hmm, never mind. We're going to do that. Now this one's quite complex. Um, I think I'm going to colour in quite a big area with this one. And then we'll bring some shine around here somewhere. And um, I think we'll actually make that a bit dark and take the shine on the sides for that one. 
I'm not very consistent even within my own object as to where the shine's going. I think we'll keep to the sides here. Maybe that should have been green, but it isn't now. Um, here, we've got quite a big space, so we need quite a lot of um, pencil here. I'm listening out for the door. My husband's ordered something. Um, it's um, it's nothing very exciting. Some paper. My boys like a particular brand of paper when they're doing their college work, and they're nearly out. I think it will last them, but we just decided we'd grab one just in case. Um, I'm going to use the cold grey three next, and. Uh, Pretty much extend that nearly all the way, but remembering I want a wider gap, and I've got a little bit of blue to go in as well. But the blue can go on top of the grey, so it's not too crucial if you haven't left much of a gap. Yeah, so the, the paper comes from a shop, we don't have one in our area and the one, it's one reasonably close to where he works but it's it's not, it's in the wrong direction, on a really busy road etc, so it's just easier to have it delivered. So uh, that's what we're doing, so I'm sort of half listing out for that delivery. I don't know what time it's coming, I don't think they've given him a time. Um, I've grabbed the sky blue for the bit of blue. I'm now thinking, is blue going to go with green? We'll find out, won't we? Sky blue. <laughs> so I'm going to sort of put this across the lighter area. I don't want it really dark, just a little bit. And still must remember to leave that gap in the middle. Trying to just go around all these little leaves. It's a little bit fiddly there, isn't it? You can always redraw them if and um, recolour them, I mean, if they don't look how you'd hoped. Just leaving a little bit of white there. Hmm. Looks quite a bit too blue. I'm going to go back over it with a cold grey three over these blue bits. Just a little bit. It's a bit too blue. The idea is that there's a hint, not that it actually looks blue. That that bit's better. But here, it looks a bit too blue for my liking. <laughs> Sticking my tongue out as I colour. <laughs> right, let's have a look now. I'm thinking about whether we need any white pen anywhere. We do. I want a little bit on our bead. Yeah, I've just noticed I haven't done that, have I? Let's not um, get that pen out yet. Oops, let's do our cold grey three up here. Oh, I got so distracted with the bottom I forgot to uh, do it. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this oops, sky blue on there just to uh, just so that it looks similar. I don't know how noticeable it will be. And now I'm going to use my oops, the pencils are rolling everywhere. This one to put shine. I'm just going to put it on that side because the label's in the way over there. I think it's quite enough. Um, so there is um that one completed. Actually, let's, uh, let's just come out a little bit so you can see the whole page of that. Oh, let's take that away. It's a bit scruffy, isn't it? There we go. So there's the whole of that bit. And actually, if we come out a little more, I'm just going to have to move a few things. You can see the whole double page finished. On it. <laughs> just move my pencils out of the way. Oh, we 
taken out to come out even more. Oops. A bit more. There we go. There's the whole double page. That was quite a challenge, I thought. So if you kept up and coloured along, well done. Because I found that really quite hard and I'm sure I wasn't the only one. But uh, it's really nice to have that one done. I've got so many pages to do in this book and it's gorgeous. But uh, that one's finished. I've got a few, I've got to dip into, I've got a few requests for other things to do. So I've got to dip into some other books. Um, but I have got a few other pages in here that I want to uh, do with you because, for example, um, we did one a while ago um, there and I've only done half the page so I need to do this side. I'm very aware that I need to do that one for you and you're probably sitting there going, why haven't you done the other side? And uh, there's another one like it as well where I've only done half the page, I think not sure maybe that's the only one so I will be um, doing that um, at some point coming back and doing a few bits and pieces in here it's a lovely book but for now that's me done thank you so much for watching um, as I say well done if you coloured along do have a really lovely day and happy colouring <laughs>